Hello everyone, welcome to BS3336 UAB Proteomics Workshop on the topic of glycomics and glycoproteomics. In this video, we will be talking about glycosylation and how it affects the structure and function of the protein. And next, we will be talking about what is glycomics and glycoproteomics and how to make use of the proteomics analysis to analyze and detect the protein modification through MSMS spectrum and database search. And lastly, we will be focusing on the case study about high gly how glycan can be used as a diagnostic biomarker to detect particular disease. Glycosylation process is a covalent attachment of oligosaccharide chain on the protein backbone. It is considered as the most common post-translational modifications of protein. There are two different ways in which glycan can be added into amino acid through enzymatic ways called glycosylation, where this process is done by enzyme called glycosyl transferase, and the other one by non-enzymatic ways in the process called glycation. This diagram illustrates the cellular processes of protein glycosylation. Most plasma membrane and secretory protein contain one or more carbohydrate chain synthesized through the glycosylation. In cell, some glycosylation reactions occur in the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum, while others are in the lumina of Golgi cystine. The presence of certain carbohydrate residue on the protein provides useful marker to track their movement from endoplasmic reticulum to Golgi apparatus. Glycosylation can be categorized under different types, N-link, O-link, glycation, C-link, and phosphoglycosylation. In N-link glycosylation, the glycan binds to the amino group of asparagine in the endoplasmic reticulum. In O-link, it is characterized by monosaccharide which bind to the hydroxyl group of serine and threonine in the ER, Golgi, cytosol, and nucleus. Glypation is characterized by glycan core which links the phospholipid and the protein. In sealing glycosylation, the mannose binds to the indole ring of tryptophan. And lastly, in phosphoglycosylation, the glycan binds to serine via phosphodiester bond. In summary, the glycosylation categorization relies on the signature amino acid residue it binds to. Now let's go deeper beyond the categorization. From this figure alone, you could have probably imagined that there are many different ways on how each monosaccharide can be arranged within a single glycosylated amino acid. You are right, there is no tell on how many different combinations of different glycan can be added. This is achieved just by simply adding different monosaccharides on top of the constant base pattern. For example, in N-link glycosylation, the chain in closest proximity with the amino acid is always a linear 2-N-acetyl glucosamine followed by aminos, and then split with two menos attached to each branch. Glycosylation caused the post-translational modification through the addition of carbohydrates on the protein structure. Glycomics is the comprehensive study of glycomes, which involve the entire carbohydrates in the cell. Glycomics is the analog to genomics and proteomics, which is the systematic study of all glycan structure of a given cell type or organism. The glycome exceeds the complexity of the proteome as a result of the even greater diversity of the glycomes constitute carbohydrates and is further complicated by the sheer multiplicity of possibilities in the combination and interaction of the carbohydrates with each other and with proteins. It is widely accepted that protein glycosylation is involved in numerous essential cellular processes, thus the structural and functional characterization of these post-translational modifications are important in the rapid growing research area of glycomics and glycoproteomics. Glycoproteomics is the study of glycome attached to the proteins. It is the branch of proteomics that identifies, catalogs, and characterizes proteins containing carbohydrates as a post-translational modification. Glycoproteins also study the change or modification of protein which is associated with the disease using the combination of conventional glycan analysis through maldi tov tov and glycopeptide analysis through LC-MALDI-TOF-TOF.
This is another example showing MALDI MS MS spectrum of N glycopeptide detected from bovine IgG. From the same MS MS spectrum, detailed information can be derived on the peptide mass, peptide sequence, and the glycan structure, respectively. As discussed earlier on, glycosylation is the most common post translational modification of protein. It plays an important role in protein folding, interaction, stability, as well as signal transduction. By regulating protein activity, glycosylation is involved in the normal functioning of the cell and in the development of diseases. This figure depicts the experimental workflow of typical glycoprotomic study in laboratory. It is a top-down approach to study glycosylation from its intact conformation with peptide or glycopeptide all the way down to the sacred composition of the glycan itself. For this purpose, the experiments are layered from glycosylation of large peptide all the way down to its corresponding glycan structure which bind to the individual amino acid. The process starts with sample preparation, where complex sample mixture has to be purified to extract the sample protein. This step is important to reduce the noise in subsequent analysis. Trypsin digestion is utilized to separate the glycopeptides from non-glycopeptides for the interest of this study. And then, the peptide sample will be further processed by peptide and glycosidase F, also known as PNGS F digestion, which is specifically useful to separate anilin glycans from other types of glycans. And finally, all of these processes would be analyzed using MALDI TOP MSMS or LCMS technology for glycan localization within peptide and its saccharide structural composition. The information about glycan structure can be derived by two MS approaches called top down and bottom up. In a top down approach, an intact glycoprotein is analyzed directly using electron transfer dissociation ETD, or collision induced dissociation CID mass spectrometry technique. ETD induced backbone fragmentation, resulting in a mass spectrum that reveals the information about peptide sequence and glycosylation sites. On the other hand, CID favors the fragmentation of glycosidic bonds, providing information about glycan composition and the branching. In a bottom-up approach, the glycoprotein is first digested by an enzyme called pronase E to yield the glycan moiety attached to a single amino acid. This glycan product is then analyzed by NMA to acquire structural information about the glycan or by MS and MSMS to acquire sequence information. An ion peak of a monosaccharide can be subjected to second generation fragmentation or MS3 which results in a loss of carbohydrate side chains and provide the structural information about the monosaccharide unit. Of course, there are many other glycoprotomics approaches that can be used to study glycomics. This review article is written in 2012 and it provides a summary of those methods along with the comparison and the advantages and the drawbacks in studying a particular glycoprotein modification. Depending on the highlight of the glycom being studied, Different experimental workflow could be accordingly designed and performed using specific analytical instruments. Of all the methods utilized in the study of glycomics, there are several key methods which are considered essential. Among them are lactin affinity chromatography enrichment, chemical delamination, MS for glycopeptide, and tandem MS for glycan. Lactin affinity Lactin affinity chromatography method is commonly applied on upstream processes. Through this process, the glycoprotein or peptides are concentrated such that it only contains specific glycan structure while at the same time eliminating the non-specific binding. Chemical deamination follows a deamination follows after. This step is essential to identify not only the glycoproteins but also the site of glycosylated protein. Analyzing glycopeptide is a notorious task in a glycomic study. This is mainly because there are more than just the glycan and the peptide to be analyzed. The interaction among amino acid chain and its glycan are complicated enough to impair the capability of our current technology to precisely capture the interactions. 
Despite that huge challenge, there are several main spectrometry instruments that can be utilized in order to directly analyze the dicopeptide with the attached glycogen, such as multi toftov ms electrospray quadrupro ion trap or QIT, quadrupole tof Fourier transform ion cyclotron resonance or FTICR, or B trap with CID, or collision induced dissociation. Maldi ionization generally charged precursor ion from the glycan. This precursor ion can be later characterized using MS MS mode by cleavage of glycosidic bond and peptide with loss of glycan, leaving the information regarding the glycan moiety. Toftal fragmentation spectra will then give an additional attachment, cell information, and structure. QTOFMAX spectrometer provide a spectra with less chemical noise than spectra obtained by triple quadrupole or multi mass spectrometer. The advantages of using QTOF are higher mass accuracy, sensitivity, and resolution, thereby being able to detect ion with low intensity. Also, QTOF mass spectrometry could determine sensitive glycosylation site and of the type of attached carbohydrate moiety. FTICRMS with electron capture dissociation ECD or electron transfer dissociation ETD or infrared multiphoton dissociation IRMPD are a very powerful tools to study of glycomics. Since not only does FTICRMS have high mass accuracy and high mass resolution, but it also has the ability to sequence peptide with no loss of glycan, which is equipped with ECD. It can also produce abundant fragment ions with IRMPD, resulting from dissociation at glycosidic linkage. Last but not least, in the study of individual glycan, tandem mass spectrometry can be used for the detection of N-glycan and O-glycan released after the sample preparation. This picture depicts the nomenclature for tandem mass spectrometry product ion of glycan and fuego conjugated forms. Ions retaining the charge at the reducing terminals are named X, Y, and Z, whereas the complementary ions are labeled A, B, and C. This nomenclature is the formal terms used across the databases. There are many technical challenges faced despite of the current developed technologies, such as small sample concentration, huge diversity and nomenclature, no amplification or chemical synthesis, complexity of biological system, because even though PTM plays a minimal effect on protein stability, its presence is essential in contributing to the protein activity and localization. Next is the separation and removal of abundance, loss of glycan peptide binding site, peptide numerous and complex interactions. The study of intact glycoprotein is difficult due to numerous and more complex interaction between components of the peptide portion of the molecule with the mass spectrometer. This will impair the ability of current technology to accurately characterize the glycan. The more limitation will be the sophisticated structural analysis, tools for site-specific study, and lastly the incorporation of glycan data into well-known databases such as NCBI. After treating the sample through MS analysis, the spectra could be further analyzed in conjunction through glycoinformatics. Due to the advance in experimental analytical methods such as mass spectrometry, there is a tremendous increase in the amount of carbohydrate structure data generated. The availability of databases and tools to store, retrieve, and analyze this data in an efficient way is of fundamental importance to progress in glycomics. For glycoprotein and glycopeptide sequence analysis, a large number of well-characterized and annotated glycoprotein are commonly found in the Uniprot knowledge base. Many glycopeptide mass spectra also expanding the peptide atlas library which stores millions of high-resolution peptide fragment ion spectra acquired from a variety of biological clinical samples for peptide and protein identification. Ultimately, 
the data obtained from different aspects of the workflow need to be merged and interpreted in an integrated fashion so that the full extent of glycosylation changes associated with a particular biological state can be better reviewed. However, to the best of our knowledge, the complete glycoform analysis of any glycoproteins in a specific cell type under any specific condition has not yet been accomplished for any glycoprotein with multiple glycosylation sites. Current technology can define the glycan complement and profile the glycoproteins, but is not capable of putting them together to define the molecular species present. To date, such integrated studies still remain highly challenging even with advanced tandem mass spectrometry technologies and growing bioinformatic resources. As can see, with the help of different databases, not only peptide sequence can be determined, but it also enables the prediction of glycoprotein structures. GlycomeDB is an integration of many other databases that is essential in studying glycan. This would provide a holistic view of the query search. A library has been implemented for the interpretation of different encoding schemes, carbohydrates. There are many ways of search to cater the needs of the studies. For instance, the search can be done by database ID. It enables the search for all entries of a carbohydrates using the ID of one of the integrated databases or a GlycomDB structure ID. In addition, it is possible to make a search for all carbohydrates occurring in any one of the integrated databases. Whereas the exact structure search allows the search for a structure based on the exact definition of structure of interest. The search by species provides the search of all structures of a given species annotation. This search also allows retrieval of structures based on higher taxonomic classes such as genus and kingdom. Lastly, the substructure search will list out the search of all structure containing a defined substructure. The following slides are the MGF data for LCMSMS search provided in the course folder. During mascot database search, the variable modification is set to be deaminated. The parameter is set so because n glycosidase F or PNGase F reaction is used during sample preparation to separate n glycans from formerly glycosylated peptides by catalyzing the cleavage and subsequently deaminates the asparagine residue. The following table shows the summary of the mascot search as shown in the previous slide. The databases allow the protein identification and provide algorithm score which gives the statistical confidence of the search based on the setting of the parameter. After knowing the protein identity, we can further perform a search using protein databases such as Uniprot to study the protein function, protein cellular localizations, PONS translational modifications, and glycosylation profile of normal versus disease peptide sample. By inputting the query in Uniprot database, we can also check and compare the amino acid modifications. Glycosylations is a very common PTM found in normal healthy individual. We can use this listed glycosylation profile of the normal individual to the glycosylation profile from the patient sample of the same protein. We could perhaps find divergence in the profile and that might give us some clue of which glycosylation correlate with the particular diseases. In the past few decades, glycosylation application has gone beyond the study of post-translational modification itself. Now, let us look at the example of how N-glycosylation can serve as a biomarker in prion disease. Prion disease is a fatal neurodegenerative disease caused by misfolded protein that aggregates in the brain. It is transmissible. A typical prion protein has two N-linked glycosylation along its protein which made up of glycoforms 0, 1, and 2. The glycosylation profile in prion protein is unique in different species. In disease term, prion diseases in human is called kutzfeldt jacob disease or CGD, while in cattle it is called bovine spongiform encephalopathy or BSE. This characteristic of glycosylation profile therefore can be harnessed to identify the glycosylation and trace the origin of prion diseases. 
Another important feature that makes prion serve as a good biomarker is that prion strains exhibit a reproducible glycoform ratio which are faithfully maintained during the propagation both in vitro and in vivo. Prion disease relapses at the moment when normal prion protein undergo a change in its conformation to become a misfolded disease prion protein which will further propagate and worsen the patient condition. From the protein secondary structure shown here, the differences in glycosylation and conformation can be used as a defining characteristic of prion diseases. Normal prion protein, denoted as PRPC, and is mainly made up of alpha helical structure, whereas the disease prion protein is denoted as PRPSC and dominated by beta structure instead. High content of beta structure renders the protein to be less soluble and more resistant to proteolysis, resulting in accumulating aggregation. Even though glycosylation on the protein itself does not contribute much to the conformation and stability of parent protein, the variants across the species allow the scientists to trace the origin of the parent protein. In order to detect the origin of the parent strain, the prion sample was taken from the patient and transfected into mouse. And then, the serum is extracted and digested with proteinase K and separated by gel electrophoresis and western blood. Here in the western blood result, the sporadic CJD is the notation for the control group from normal individual. BSE is the notation for another control group from the bovine. And lastly, New variant CJD is the notation for the sample taken from a patient in the UK who exhibit diseases similar to human CJD. From the result, it shows that the patient's serum sample shows a very similar expression level and profile as the bovine serum. Therefore, it concludes that the new variant parent protein has actually originated from the cow. This is another case study in which glycosylation could serve as a biomarker in malaria disease detection and unlike the mechanism of parasitic influence in the development of this disease. The causative agent for malaria disease is protozoan parasite called Plasmodium. The most prevalent and little species is Plasmodium falciparum, which is responsible for the 90% mortality among the patients. Malaria disease is transmitted by insect factor called Anopheles mosquito. The parasite uses the whole saccharide in both insect and human for the recognition and binding events. The disease is characterized by direct glycosylation of parasite protein to GPI anchor for surface immobilization. Here is the structure identification of GPI anchor obtained by degradative study and mass spectrometry. The comparison between the serum sample of malaria patient with healthy individual have shown a significant similarity in the GPI anchor. As similar it is to humans, the GPI anchor observed has a slight differences in its lipid moiety, which is actually sufficient enough to make this molecule an effective haptin as well as a strong signaling molecule. On the other hand, the expression of lichen structure can act as a readout of changes in the expression of gene during oncogenic transformation and progression. In the light of many alterations of intracellular signaling that occur as cell, which show loss of proliferative, adhesive, and apoptotic control, it will be logical to predict that the glycan readout of a cancer cell should show altered or abnormal changes. These glycan are covalently bound to proteins and glycosmingolipids that are in most cases secreted or show residency on the outer cell surface, from which they are shed or released by hydrolytic activities, finding their way into the serum or other extracellular fluid. This would serve as a good glyco signature to detect the presence of cancer cells. With that, the US Food and Drug Administration has approved several cancer biomarkers out of different types of glycosylations. This diagram shows the typical workflow for identification of cancer biomarker in the patient's serum during diagnostic step. First, the serum is taken from patient or normal individuals and then the sample is treated and sent for mass spectrometry analysis which would then computed for the database comparisons. 
such as the detection of glycomic signature based on the expression level and structural changes. The study of glycoproteomics has provided a significant impact and also promising result in the medical field, especially in the study of human diseases through the expression of glycans. Glycoproteomics is a state-of-art technology that are in current use to describe and quantify changes in glycome as well as the application of this technology to the study of specific cell, tissue and organism. With the development of technology and methodology, the details of post-translational modification in particular glycan structure can be identified which accelerate the discovery of glycan function. By integrating the knowledge gained from glycoproteomics, it provides better understanding of glycan in physiology, development and diseases which would provide a breakthrough in disease treatment.